There are 4,000 species of spider in the US alone. Nearly all of them are venomous, but a bite wouldn't be much worse than a bee sting. However, there are a few spiders, some you may have heard of, others you probably haven't, that are the most toxic among North American arachnids. Here are five of the most dangerous spiders in the US. If it's venomous spiders we want, one of the best places to start is the wildest state in the country, Florida. Known for its menagerie of deadly creatures, the spiders here are no exception. Our first spider makes its home on the forest floors all across the state, where it hunts all sorts of invertebrates under cover of nightfall. It's unlikely you'll ever come across it, but if you flip the right log, you may come face to face with a potentially toxic spider. Now this spider right here is something extremely special. This is the Florida Wandering Spider. The Wandering Spiders are part of the family Tenidae. Distant evolutionary cousins of wolf spiders, they're smart, calculated killers, equipped with some of the most potent neurotoxins in the world. The best way to recognize them is the square-like arrangement of eyes in the center of their face. Unlike the two large eyes of wolf spiders, in the tropics, the Wandering Spiders from the Phanutria group are known man-killers, and are a contender for the title of the world's most lethal arachnid. Despite their toxic nature, wandering spiders are actually really shy, and unlike a lot of other spiders I've worked with, they really hate the light. Like, they actively flee it, almost like a cockroach would. And as a result, they're almost never seen during the daytime. The remote habitats they call home mean that bites really don't happen, so only a few reports exist about their effects on humans, but they're said to cause flu-like symptoms for several days. More research on these spiders may reveal they are hiding even more dangerous secrets, but conventional wisdom is to treat any sizable wandering spiders as if they were medically significant. For now, the Florida wandering spider stays at a rank of 5, but it's definitely a spider to be aware of. As we venture deeper into the world of extremely venomous spiders, we stay in the wilderness of central Florida, but our attention shifts to the sandy palmetto scrubs and a brilliantly colored creature with an amazing toxic power. Oftentimes in nature, we'll actually see animals that have really bright coloration. Because it gives them no camouflage, that striking color actually serves as a warning to potential predators that, hey, I might be very dangerously venomous. If you mess with me, you're gonna regret it. And in the scrub habitats of central and southern Florida, there is a spider that fits that exact description. And in the case of the Red Widow, it is definitely dangerously venomous. And if you mess with it, you might just regret it. As its name suggests, the Red Widow is a cousin of the infamous Black Widow, and possibly one of the rarest widow spiders in the world. Found only in scrub habitats in central and southern Florida, not a lot is known about them due to how infrequently they're seen by people. But this spider is one of the most venomous in the nation. Like all widow spiders, the Red Widow possesses a potent neurotoxin used to short-circuit the nervous systems of its insect prey. They nest inside saw palmettos exposed to open fly-through zones, using their gnarled, tangled web to ensnare flying insects that are zipping by. It's also the way scientists like me are able to find them. Oh, there's a web. Where, where are you? Uh, <gasps> That's a widow! This is the second Second location I've ever seen these incredible spiders. Let me um, let me get her out so we can take a better look at her. Truthfully, not a lot is known about this spider, and that's mostly because they're so rare and found in such remote areas. In fact, there aren't actually any bites in the medical record because it's not your average Joe who's getting bitten by this spider in their house. It's hobbyists who keep them as pets and researchers like me who are actually out in the field studying and sampling them. Because there's so few reports, there's a lot of stories out there about what this spider can do, most of which are anecdotal, though a few have actually come from actual researchers who have had extremely averse effects. And the biggest and most notorious story about the Red Widow is that if you are bitten, you will have chronic symptoms that last the rest of your life, which sounds pretty serious considering it's a tiny little spider that lives in 
in palmettos. And interestingly enough, I'm actually one of the few people in the world who can actually say they've been bitten by the red widow. The initial bite was a faint stinging sensation, which is typical of widows. Oftentimes, you don't even know you've been bitten, but it's not the initial bite that's a problem, it's what follows. 30 minutes in, I began to feel aches all up my arm. Fearing the worst, I watched it over the next few hours. Dull aches traveled through my muscles into my armpit, but nothing ever exceeded a 3 or 4 out of 10. The best thing I can compare it to is the sensation you have the day after a particularly taxing gym session. Weak and achy. Nothing that wasn't unmanageable, but in severe cases of widow bites, that pain can be really intense and it can be all throughout your body. We're talking massive headaches, nausea, back pain. In some cases, widow bites have been described to be debilitating. And the thing is, because of the nature of the toxin, no over-the-counter pain meds is actually going to touch it. So these are spiders to take very, very seriously. With such a fearsome reputation, the Red Widow would definitely be higher on this list if it were more common. But even people who live in their range can go their entire lives without even knowing this spider exists, let alone seeing one. So it earns its place at number four. Now as we're climbing the list here, I'm sure I have some city-dwelling audience members who are kind of sighing a sigh of relief because all of the crazy spiders we've seen so far are all way out in rural areas. Well, I'm here to tell you that just because you're not living in a rural area doesn't mean you're safe from really venomous spiders. Now what I've got right here is a brown widow spider. <laughs> literally in the least natural area you could possibly imagine awesome little spiders are actually living the brown widow is a very interesting spider pretty much only lives in urban areas due to the fact that it's actually invasive it's, it was brought here most likely due to the plant trade we're not entirely sure where they came from most signs point to south africa but we can confirm that the brown widow is definitely an invasive species in many cities across the world. Building its tangled web in forgotten corners, the telltale sign the brown widow is around are its iconic spiky egg sacs, and they build a lot of them. Unlike other widow spiders, it's pretty unassuming. It actually looks kind of like any old run-of-the-mill house spider or cobweb spider with its drab brown coloration until you flip it over and see that bright orange hourglass on its underside. Unassuming or not, these guys are no joke. It may not be as striking as the red or black widows, but this is not a spider to take lightly. Native or not, it might be the most toxic spider in North America. When we're talking about potency of venom, we actually have a way to measure that, and that's in lethal doses or LD50, where the lower the number, the more toxic the venom. To put it in perspective, most of the venomous snakes here in the US are between 10 and one. But where does the brown widow fall? The brown widow actually has a lethal dose less than one. Drop for drop, this spider's venom is more potent than all but just a few of the venomous snakes we have here. But it's very possible that you haven't even heard of this spider before. So if it's so toxic, why is nobody dying from it or talking about it at all? And that's because when it comes to venomous bites, the dosage makes the poison. The amount of venom oftentimes matters a lot more than the toxicity. A Western Diamondback is a lot less toxic than a Brown Widow. It has so many more times the dosage of venom that a bite from that snake could absolutely kill you and is a medical emergency. Whereas the Brown Widow has so little venom that even when bites occur, it's actually considered to be one of the less serious Widow bites in the world. With neurotoxic venom, it's a little bit easier to see the relationship between toxicity and dosage. But not all spiders rely on paralyzing their prey in the same way that widows do. One of the most feared spiders in the US and across the world takes a different approach and perhaps the most unsettling. Now this might be the most feared spider in the US and North America. What I've got right here is a brown recluse spider. As you know, I just love talking about venom. It's so cool. And the thing is, different venoms work differently. Most spiders, including all the spiders we've discussed so far, tend to have a venom that's a lot more neurotoxic. It's going to be attacking the nerves of the animals that it bites. In the cases of severe neurotoxins, they actually shut down 
the central nervous system of their victims. A lot of the snakes here in the US use a different kind of venom, known as a hemotoxin, which is going to be attacking the blood cells of their prey and the blood cells of their predators if they bite, say, a human. Both of these are actually fairly easy to treat with antivenom if they're addressed soon enough. It's the third kind of venom that we see in North American venomous wildlife that is a bit harder to treat, and that is a cytotoxin. Cytotoxins are basically just anti-cell, where they're not super picky about what kind of cells they're targeting. It's the same reason why we see such severe effects with like staph infections, because staph bacteria actually use a cytotoxin to break down all of the tissue that it comes in contact with. Recluse spiders, believe it or not, actually employ the exact same enzyme that staph bacteria use to dissolve the insides of their prey, and in very severe cases, can cause necrosis in humans. Due to how weird cytotoxins are, we actually don't have an antivenom for recluse bites, which makes some of their more potent tropical cousins very, very serious bites. Believe it or not, North America is home to at least nine known species of brown recluse. All of them have this cytotoxic venom, but for whatever reason, it doesn't seem as active against humans as some of their tropical cousins. Despite many anecdotal reports, there are no confirmed cases in the US where a human was killed by any of our brown recluse spiders, though in extremely rare cases, bites can cause very serious necrotic lesions. The real danger with the recluse spiders here in the US is not their venom, but how common they are and the types of places they tend to hide. Normally we talk about brown recluses being inside your house, but I actually wanna talk about where you'd find them in the wild so we can kind of understand their behavior a little bit better. Right here behind me, I've got a dead tree and brown recluses actually really like this kind of habitat they're gonna be hiding inside that bark on dead trees and fallen logs and sometimes even underneath rocks in your house cardboard is a lot like the habitats that they'd be hiding in in the wild so if you live in brown recluse territory cardboard is a place you really want to be careful around that being said, in North America, less than one in like 2,000 even have any necrosis happen at all, and even fewer than that ever have anything that's gonna be extremely serious. Why this happens, we're not totally sure, but the vast majority of cases, a brown recluse bite is not a medical emergency. And due to how non-serious recluse bites in the US tend to be, the only reason that I'm even ranking the brown recluse this high is just due to the fact that they're so common and do make their way into home. Like the brown recluse, there is another spider which has conquered most of the continental United States. The most dangerous spider in the country, and perhaps the most iconic venomous spider in the world, the Black Widow. Something you probably didn't know is that here in the US, Black Widow actually refers to three different species. We have the Northern, the Southern, and the Western Black Widows. And all of them are extremely neurotoxic. Right there, you can already see on her abdomen that bright red hourglass, the famous mark of the Black Widow. Now, it's long been said that, that hourglass tells you if you're bitten by this spider, you only have an hour to live, which is not entirely true. In fact, unless you are literally on your deathbed and an hour away from death, if you're bitten by the spider, you certainly have more than an hour to live because believe it or not, this spider is actually not that deadly. So what does that hourglass actually mean? Like all the other spiders in this list, the Black Widow likes to hide in forgotten corners where it's dark and dry. They build these gnarly webs that act as shelter and a tool for securing food. Widow spiders, like other web builders, actually use their web as an extension of their nervous system, with each sticky strand serving as a messenger to the spider. She sits upside down in her web, her large abdomen weighing her down. This is where the hourglass comes in. If a predator were to disturb her home, they'll immediately see the bright red patch sticking out against her jet black body, and they'll think twice about disturbing the spider any further. So while the hourglass doesn't spell a countdown to doom, it certainly does serve as a warning to stay away. At the end of the day, none of the spiders on this list have killed anyone in recent history. You know, I chose the title of this video for a reason, yeah, sure, Deadly would probably sell the video more, but Deadly isn't really accurate in the US. The Black Widow has a couple of potential confirmed kills, but since so many sources dispute whether or not those actually were caused by the Black Widow, I'm gonna go ahead and lean in the no 
category. Until we have conclusive evidence the Black Widow has killed anybody, I'm gonna say that it probably hasn't. And even across the world, spider-related deaths are extremely rare, even in countries where there actually are lethal spiders. Because at the end of the day, spiders are pretty reclusive, secretive animals that really don't want to come across humans any more than we want to come across them. I like to describe them as simple creatures just trying to make their way in the universe. If we leave them to their business, they'll leave us to ours. And like them or leave them, they're pretty integral parts of our ecosystem and the world would look very different without them. So next time you see a spider, highly venomous or not, just appreciate a fleeting encounter with an unusual creature from the secret world all around us. And as long as you respect it from a distance, there's no reason to fear it. That being said, if you do live here in the US, there is one arachnid I would advise you to have caution around. It's not a spider, it's actually a scorpion. And unlike the spiders in this video, that one actually does have recent human kills. You wanna learn more about the Arizona bark scorpion? Check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.